Welcome back. It's Wednesday and we are trying to understand the key investment trends when it comes to looking and making that decision on who should be your money market manager. To help us unwind this conversation, we are joined by Mr. George Marks. George Marks is a co-director at Market Cup Trainers. Market Cup Trainers, it offers investment training for individuals as well as for chamas and welfare groups. And he has been doing this since the year 2014-2015. So he's well attuned to investor sentiment and the products that are available in the financial space in Kenya. Welcome to the show, George. Thank you. We are talking Thank about investments um, in money market funds. But before we delve into money market funds, what has the investment climate been? And from the space that you're in, you do engage a lot with retail and high net worth investors. What sentiment are you getting now that we're coming to the tail end of COVID-19? Uh, we had a brief period where there's a plunge in investment sentiments because uh, people I think are more or less in survival mode. So yeah, most people are not really investing. They're more focused on the essentials, food, rent, education, not even so much. But I think now that we have a vibrant uh, season that's coming up because people can see that COVID's really kind of, we hope, is getting behind us. Yeah, but there's still some sort of uh, negative sentiment towards investments unless it's really a quick return one. Okay, so what, what are quick returns? What are people more open to investing or listening to? Uh, currently, in terms of quick returns, people are looking at, um, you can talk of money markets, yeah, at least there's a sure, sure, and it's very easy to register for it. Uh, if you talk of guarantee returns, there are guys that, who are asking about the bonds and the treasury bills, but then the process of registering for that is a little bit difficult. Yes. So uh, most of the safe investment that people are looking at mostly is money market funds. Okay, money market funds. And that's the Absolutely. topic for the day. Um, yeah. A lot has been happening, but before I come to what has been happening in the public realm, let's talk about money market funds. Why are they a good option and how should you think about when you're trying to choose a money market manager? Uh, basically, uh, people, I would say from experience, prefer the money market funds because they are safe investment, literally close to zero risk. I can't really say zero, but it's a money back guarantee kind of investment. And we do advise uh, most investors to, do, to go for the money market as opposed to maybe the equity funds and the balance funds. Because traditionally, with money market funds, the only worry that you have is the loss in terms of interest, reduction rather, but your capital is very safe. So uh, when you look at money market funds, we do guide investors to look at mostly the fund manager. Yes. Yeah. They should be licensed and stuff. You need to look at the custodian, uh, mostly a bank or a microfinance institution. And these are normally uh, CMA approved. Yes. And then you have the trustee and the auditor. So uh, what normally happens, uh, people just look at the returns that are being published in the dailies and they see whoever is giving the high returns, they go for it. But they don't really look at the underlying, you know, the custodians, the trustees and everything. Okay, so custodians, yeah. um, trustees and managers. Is, is size a thing? Should you consider size when you look Absolutely. at... Absolutely. Okay. And uh, not just size as such, but also you need to look at the consistency in terms of returns. Okay. Uh, mostly when the markets, uh, basically the economy is buoyant, uh, you really find that most uh, fund managers are giving very good returns, very high returns. Okay. And this is normally a good time. New entrants come in, they give relatively high returns, but when the market starts uh, rushing into a bear season, these returns vanish. So then where were the returns coming from, George? Well, you, you want to attract uh, investors into your platform, you basically need to give them high returns. So I think it's normally a strategy to get investors to lock in. Okay. You know, like Safaricom locks in guys via M-Pesa, same thing. Uh, if you unlock in guys into your investment pool, you give them higher returns. Once they're in, basically they don't really want to leave. They don't want to leave or you don't want them to leave? Or it's in your best interest that they don't exactly, leave? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. They might leave, but you prefer not let them leave. So you'll find uh, a company is giving very high returns. But in essence, they may not really be sustainable, and that's why you have sometimes your funds collapsing. Okay. So, yeah. in fact, speaking about returns, I'm just looking at the latest returns that came out at the end of, uh, of uh, September. And we do have the GenCap Hella Imara Fund at 10.5%. Then we have Cyton, the money market at 10.4%. Zimele, 9.9%. Alpha Africa, 979 Nabo, 965 Actually, some of the small caps. Madison, 9.5%. CIC, 93 And uh, Britain. 9.02. What's your take from these names that I'm, that I'm just putting out there? Are they names that have been here for a long time? Are they known in the market? Do they have size? Yeah, uh, if you look at the uh, money market, basically the general unit trust market in Kenya, you, you find the CIC is quite ahead. I think uh, it should be at over 40% 
of the entire, I think they have about almost 25 billion yes. in uh, assets that they're managing. And then you have uh, ICA. Okay. Yeah, ICA and Britam, I think around 11 percent each. And then you have the small players nibbling out the remainder. So when I advise clients to invest, the first thing I look at is the size of the fund. Okay, yeah. the size of the There's fund. There's a reason the fund is that big and it's able to give consistently such good returns. You know, when you look at money markets, you need to look at it from a risk aversion perspective. And so if 10% uh, is going to give me a sleepless night and yet 7% will give me a good night's sleep, yes. I will certainly go for 7%. So what you're saying is, let's put it into numbers. If I have a million, and um, we've looked at the funds, you've said CIC, for example, 9.34%. Uh, I'll get um, 93,400 in a year, yeah. right? Then versus some of the newer ones, we have GenCup and Cyton that are 10.5 and 10.4%. So one is giving you 93,400, another one is giving you 104,000 shillings. So the differential is yeah. 11,000. So you have to ask yourself, am I going to stay awake al al at night for 11,000 or will I take the 93,400 for a 1 million investment and sleep comfortable and know my money is there? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd advise someone to go for a consistently uh, sustainable kind of return. Okay. Because, uh, I mean, you know, just investing everything you have in the money markets, the assumptions that you're also doing some risk investment, say the stock market. Uh, you also may be doing some real estate. So uh, the unit trust are supposed to be a kind of percentage in your portfolio. Okay. So And you put them there because this money you can easily get. And wherever you have some surplus cash, you can easily put there. So you really want to have the comfort. So if the price of your comfort is 11,000 shillings, then I'd rather go for... The, 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 the law and that gives me that good night's sleep. Okay. Yeah. Also like that you're saying, all of your investments, you shouldn't have 100% of your investment in money market funds. Absolutely not. What, what's a good ratio from your experience? Uh, how can I put it? Uh, we have the rule of the thumb when it comes to safe investments. Okay. Uh, let me say less low risk investments and mm -hmm. high risk investments. And we go by the rule of the thumb. So depending on your age, let's say you're 30 years old. Yes. Yeah, uh, basically, if you subtract your age from 100, it should give you the amount, the percentage they're supposed to have in the risk investments. Okay. So when you're young, the encouragement is that you put a lot of your investments in the risk investments. And then uh, your age, basically, let's say you're 60. The assumption is that you made good money by the time you're 60. So what you're doing is trying to protect your investments from your prior years when you're very productive. Okay. So at 60... We expect you to be doing around maximum 40% in risk investments. Okay. And then the 60%, which corresponds to your age, is in safe investment. So that's when you're doing bonds and uh, money market funds. Oh, and what's, what's the key difference? Why should I pick a money market fund over a treasury bond? Or when should I pick a treasury bond over a money market fund? <laughs> I think there's a straightforward uh, answer. Yes. It's really difficult to invest in a bond as opposed to a money market fund. Okay. Uh, if I need, if I have a client who wants to put money in the money market fund, I'll just call someone at Cyton and say, I have a client for you. Yes. Or I'll call someone at Britam or CIC and tell them, I have a client for you. Okay. Yeah, so they'll look for the client with the forms. The client's going to fill the forms up. And within a day or two, the funds are already in motion. Okay. Uh, you can compare that process with the one when it comes to opening a treasury bonds account, CDSC, yes. you know, yeah, it's a bit tedious. Okay. Yeah. So you have to walk there and get the form, take it back to your branch manager. But I like what you're also bringing in the context of convenience. So we have seen the onset of uh, digital banking and now we are seeing digital investments. Some of these money market managers have online platforms, some don't. In your experience, I'm sure you interact with a lot of this. Are there some names that come out that stand out and make your life easier if you wanted to open an account for a client or are there any considerations to think about in terms of convenience and um, access via the mobile phone? Yeah, I think uh, currently I can say flatly that all these uh, money market managers basically are more or less the same in terms of convenience. It's a competition. It's really cutthroat. Okay. Yeah, so I've dealt with uh, Sandlam as an agent, CIC, Britam, and one thing you realize, they're always trying to adapt and copy each other. If someone brings something innovative that's addressing the convenience of the client, they'll definitely adapt to that. Okay. So currently, as we speak, Almost, I can say over ninety percent of them among the top. Yes. Yeah, they already have the digital platform. So the 
when you have spare change at midnight, you can just still, put it there. Yeah, so I just go to my phone, then I can look for the individual. I know I, I was looking out for some of the names over the weekend, and I, I was happy by how easy it was to just yeah, activate it's, it's them. Easy. Okay. You can really compare that to say you want to do a top up on a treasury bond. Oh, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. I hear you. Okay. So we've talked about size. We've talked about considerations. A size. It, it pays to be big. Returns. You have to be careful about the return risk scenario in your mind. Do you want to sleep at night for just an extra few sh shillings or do you want to take on that risk? Then we've talked about accessibility and you've said it's highly competitive. So all of them have more or less similar platforms when it comes to ease. When we were starting this show, you also mentioned the element of the fund managers. Who's running this fund? How do we look at that when we are looking at the 19 um, money market managers today? Uh, that one, I uh, when we do analysis, I like looking at the returns from the specific fund manager. Basically, we don't do, we don't deal with fund managers who've not been around for at least five years. Five years, yeah. okay. So at least five years, it's very easy for you to compute the returns and see the consistency or lack thereof. Okay. Yeah, and the reason I prefer the top established uh, fund managers is because they are quite more reliable, and they have this huge base. And you look at the custodian banks, you look at the trustees, the auditors. I mean, these are guys who've been in this market; they really understand it. I find and I try to look at the new guys coming in, uh, like in my position, if I was to start a fund right now and I want to lure investors to my platform, what would I do? Basically, I give them very high returns okay. above market average. And that's so then you'd end up being number one. We'd have George Mung's fund. Absolutely. So yeah. you'd give us 11%. <laughs> I'd love that, which is good for me, but a bit risky for the investors. Yes. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. And then in terms of allocation, there's always a conversation of, okay, these funds are making, the best in class is making 10.51%. That's per year. Um, the one year is at about 7.5, 7.7 percentage points. Where are these returns coming from, George? It depends. It depends on the investment uh, portfolios for these fund managers. So uh, they have to look at the trends in the market, basically. And I've been seeing it like, uh, especially those that are biased hugely towards real estate, it's really been a downhill journey. Okay. I mean, I think for the last three, four, five years. So we had a peak, uh, I think around 2010 or thereabouts. And then uh, mm -hmm. most of the smart ones kind of divested from real estate and they went into something different. So you find that most of them are now doing, if it's real estate, then it's in a more competitive manner. And Saiton really came up with a very innovative product of trying to do the off-plant thing and sell. Uh, so currently, most of them you find they're in the stock market. We've had a bear run in the stock market for a very long time, which is really good for search to pick very good stocks. And so we have that divesting. They're still in real estate because that's the core investment space for most Kenyan firms. Yes. Yeah, but the divesting bit has to be done because we're currently in a slump. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So it's neither here or there. So it depends yeah. on who was, who, so who was late to the party? Is that something that you, you can discuss in public? So you've told us bigger is better than smaller. Um, older is better than newer. Yeah. Um, you've told us newer are probably putting money into real estate. Is there any way you have a sense of who has the most allocation when it comes to real estate or how would we, what, what would be a good sense of looking at it without putting anybody on the spot? Now, I, 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 I think uh, I did fault uh, sight on, on this. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a discussion with Dander on the same. And my concern, I mean, they're really smart guys. They're really, Saiton's made of really intelligent minds and I really admire them. But the allocation of most of their portfolio, which I think CMI is also fighting them in real estate, yes. really posed a threat to the investor funds because when you look at the market trends right now, real estate is not really something you want to talk about. They, they, they do give us these reports from Hus Consult, Site on Investments as well, they do. And we can also correlate them with data from the CBK on the NPLs and how big they're coming from the real estate sector. So you realize these trends uh, this data give you a very negative trend in terms of potential returns in real estate. So if in Nairobi you're going to make returns annually of around 7%, 8% from real estate, yes. what's the point? I'd rather go buy a bond. Exactly, yeah. because you're getting the higher returns on exactly. bonds. Exactly. And now you mix in the fact that uh, typical Kenyan investors, does, they don't really understand uh, the investment space. Yeah, So they'll follow the, the money, basically by the money, they follow the best rates. So when something happens, you know, you're, you're in a ship, it hits an iceberg, that's when you realize, wow, this ship was not really made of metal, it's plastic. It's pl so yeah, <laughs> okay. so guys wanna run away basically. Yes. And you know when you run away from such fund that's invested heavily in such big projects, 
you're causing something more or less like a bank run like what we had on Chess Bank the other day. Okay. So yeah, it puts them in a very precarious condition. But it's because most of these guys, they don't really understand the investments. What is happening there? Yeah, they don't. Yeah. I like that comment. Let's take a break. At times you put your money somewhere, then it hits the iceberg and you realize that the ship was no longer made of metal or wood, but it was actually made of plastic. What do you do when you get yourself in such a situation? What are your questions when we're having this conversation? 20146, so that's our SMS line, or reach out to me, say hello. My name is Mbitha Mwema, and I am on all social media platforms, or you could reach out to us at Metropole TV. I want to hear your voice, and I want to hear your thoughts. We come back after the short break.